everybody. Happy Monday. It feels very alien to say happy Monday when starting these sessions because they're usually on a Tuesday. Um, but we've made an exception today for a very awesome session that I'm so excited for. Um, if you've joined previous weeks, welcome back. If this is your first week of PLM Summer School, then welcome. Um, you've missed some awesome sessions. So if you have missed any of the sessions so far, head to my website, prettytomarkter.com. You can catch up on all of the amazing guest speakers that I have had the pleasure of talking to so far. Um, open up the chat if you haven't already and let me and Shweb know who you are, what's your name and where are you from? Um, we've had people join from all over the planet, which is crazy. Um, and it's always nice to see where you're tuning in from. So whilst you're doing that, um, I am joined today by Shweb, who is one of my favourite people. Um, I think that everything you are up to is awesome. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about your journey shortly. Um, you're building your business in public so transparently, which I appreciate as a fellow founder so much. Um, and not just that, your journey has been very short so far, but in the best way and all that you are achieving um, inspires me every day. Um, before I hand over to you, however, and we learn about your amazing journey, and we're going to talk all things personal branding today. So what is personal branding, where we build that, your experience with it, and all of that goodness. Um, before we do, I have some quick fire questions for you. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I'm not going to lie, but go on. That's easy. No. I promise. <laughs> awesome. So quick fire question number one is, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have a really sweet tooth, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go for a Kinder Bueno hot cookie dough with oh. ice cream, whipped cream. Amazing. I'd, I'd probably die very quickly on a diet of that, but... You know what, live fast, die young, when food's that good. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> awesome answer. One of the best so far. Um, quick fire question number two is who inspires you the most? Oh, <laughs> it's a hard one, actually, isn't it? Good question. Um, I would generally say some of my friends um, who are totally outside the business world. Um, they just kind of like remind me like what life is about, you know? I don't want to get too deep, but they're just like awesome human beings and they're just like, yeah, live life to the fullest. And most importantly, like kind, genuine people. Yeah. And I found that really underrated, Absolutely. especially on social media and on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and in the business world. I think that's so, so important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I love that so much. How special. Cool. So question number three is what is one movie or someone last week messaged me and was like, why did you call it movie? It's a, it's a film. So what film or movie <laughs> um, could you watch on repeat forever? Harry Potter, the entire marathon. Great. I've done it before, multiple times, literally all films back to back. Um, really good for drinking games as well, if anyone's into that. <laughs> interesting I am um, Harry Potter always reminds me of Christmas so I feel a bit mm. like I don't know why um because there's only certain scenes set at Christmas it's not a Christmas film so I always feel I feel wrong watching it mm. at other times of the year but maybe that can be my weekend plans I'll hide inside from the heat I love that good choice um what is a marketing or kind of personal branding resource that you think everyone should check out oh um you know what, I'm actually loving um, a lot of the micro communities right now on Instagram. Um, I feel like you're the blueprint for that, Sophie. Pillow Marketer is the blueprint. <laughs> I think there's so much good value in small creators who are building from scratch and showing you how it's done, mm -hmm. rather than kind of big kind of corporate platforms, which are ultimately built for big corporate companies and people with big, big budget. So I would say, you know, young creators on, on Instagram, people are actually living and breathing what, yeah. they, what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. that, that's, why, that's why I would go. Amazing. I am. So I've obviously been on Instagram with PLM for the last two years. And one of my favorite things is discovering new people 
to love. Mm. Um, I'm going to throw in a recommendation actually, because, because why not? Um, I followed an amazing girl a few weeks ago called The Social Teacup. Um, highly recommend. She shares some really awesome content and um, love discovering new people on Instagram. Awesome. Um, penultimate question, rather controversial, and I don't want to get you cancelled, but mm-hmm. does pineapple belong on pizza? No. <laughs> And that's the correct answer, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen and people. Here we have it. <laughs> I love this question because um, when I asked it in the first week, everyone in the chat just went crazy. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a question that's always on the list. Amazing. Um, so final question for quick fire question before we pick your brain on all things personal branding is mm-hmm. what is one thing that you've learned so far in 2022? Ooh. Um, honestly, there's, there's a lot, a lot of lessons that I've learned. Um, I would probably say that big on yourself oh, I love more than anything else. Um, like if I look where I was in January or before that, like I didn't have the confidence to do what I've done now. And it's been other people who have like helped me and supported me. So surround yourself with good people who are like empowering and want to see you win. And then bet big on yourself to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that so much. Well, those are some awesome answers. And I'm glad to hear that they were all correct answers too. (laughs) Um, It's a safe space here. No answer is a wrong answer unless we're talking pineapple on pizza. Um, And loving all of your guys' responses in the chat. Um, Roman saying, fight me. Um, Izzy's letting us all know that you're cancelled. You're very much not, I promise. Um, We've got pineapple gang. We've got the non-pineapple gang. And that's all super exciting. And I love that. Thank you guys so much for getting involved. Um, Shweb, tell us about you. Um, I feel like I could gas you up forever because I just think that what you're doing and achieving is awesome. Um, So introduce yourself, your business. Um, Yeah, tell us everything. Okay, so um, hi, I'm Shweb. Um, I uh, graduated university, well, I finished university last year. I studied at Durham. I did geography. Um, So completely different to what I do now. Um, And yeah, so whilst I was at uni, I worked part-time for a personal branding agency. I then moved on um, and became their first full-time employee. And then I was with them kind of throughout last year. And it got towards December time and I was seeing so many young creators doing amazing things. And I was so inspired by by just people, like young people betting on themselves and setting up platforms and communities and creating content and creating their own opportunities. I thought, okay, I want to do this. Um, so I left my job uh, literally December the 31st of last year, went into the new year um, as a freelancer and took on a few clients here and there. And then, you know, it just scaled very quickly. Um, and then I turned into an agency back in April. And here I am now with, um, with a personal branding agency. I have around 25 clients. Mm-hmm. We um, grow, currently grow in my team. So I have three or four people in my team. Um, and yeah, very, very exciting. I'm currently also, which is very, very exciting. Um, I'm actually launching the company brand in a couple of weeks. Um, there's an exclusive. Um, it, right now, my company doesn't have like a trading name. It does have a legal name, which is just SA Personal Brand. That's mm-hmm. really boring. So I've come up with a whole brand and new website and new socials. Um, and I'm going to be sharing those within a couple of weeks. But yeah, I basically help CEOs, directors, um, C-suite executives and creators build their personal brands on LinkedIn for a number of reasons, you know, to helping them generate business leads, mm-hmm. um, kind of attracting PR opportunities, also fi- finding new employees, retaining employees, building digital visibility, growing their communities, et cetera, et cetera. Amazing. And you do it amazingly well. Um, I know that I have no idea how long we've been connected for, but I remember messaging late last year um, when you were kind of like in the very early stages of your career. And just to see you now makes me so happy. Um, And I think everything you said about watching like young founders and creators just thriving um, is one of the reasons why I love spending so much time, probably too much time on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I um, I actually have recently turned off 
on iPhones, I don't know if I don't know about any other models, you have screen time. Um, I've actually turned it off because I was a bit ashamed at how much time I've been spending on LinkedIn and other places. Um, but it's the best place to be inspired. I mean, you're building a whole business there, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so congratulations on everything so far. Um, I for one am very excited to say what you do next, what the company branding is going to be, um, which is all super fun. Um, for anyone joining who has no clue what personal branding is, um, how would you sum it up? Um, how would you define what personal branding really means? Okay, so ultimately, it's just showing up as your authentic self online, in person, and just conveying who you are, what you're about, your ideas, your thoughts and particular things, um, your personality, which is a big one, your skills, experience, etc. And basically, instead of having all those things but not sharing them, it's just putting yourself out there a little bit more um, and then getting the recognition for that. Um, so I like to see your personal brand as kind of the intersection of what you put out into the world, but also how you're perceived. And when you can marry those two things together, that's when you know you've got a really strong personal brand that is doing what you intend it to do. Um, you know, on LinkedIn in particular, what does a, a good personal brand look like? It looks like kind of honest, raw, transparent content. It looks like um, kind of matching your offline persona to your online one. There should be total cohesion. And if there isn't, mm -hmm. you're doing something very wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Also, you know, a good personal brand is totally value driven. It's about your community, your audience. It's not about metrics, trying to stack up numbers on likes and comments and shares. It's actually creating really valuable relationships and connections between the people who matter most to you and your business, but also who you can help and support in some, some capacity. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of in a, in a very quick nutshell. That would be my point on it. Awesome. And I think you've defined it perfectly i am um, i remember when i first so i've been posting on linkedin for about a year and a nine months just over a year and a half let's go with um and i was posting for a good three to four months before i understood or even heard the word personal branding and um i remember when i did i was like oh that's that's not for me that's for like you know the ceo of unilever or a really awesome founder who's so much further ahead in their journey than i might ever be and thinking it was for all of these other people and successful personas and not for myself um i remember digging into it reading a little more about it and um to me personal branding is just what you want to be known for mm -hmm. the best way i think about it is if someone was describing me to someone else hopefully in a good way, what would I want them to say about me? Um, and for me, understanding what personal branding was really changed my LinkedIn game because rather than shooting out content and not knowing who it was for, what I was doing, why I was posting, um, I feel like it gives your presence such much, much more purpose, just as you've described right there. Um, so rewinding a little, Mm -hmm. It was late last year, you got your first role in personal branding, so kind of your first introduction to it. Um, what did you think of personal branding when you first discovered it? And I guess as you've learned more about it, its benefits and if you, as you have began to build your own, um, how do you think your perception of what a personal brand is or what a good one is has changed over that time? Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. I think I was subconsciously aware of personal branding a, a couple of years ago, maybe two, three years ago, but there wasn't a name. I didn't attach the phrase personal branding to what I was trying to do or what I was seeing happen around me. I think this year it's exploded as an industry, just like, you know, we had influencer marketing. Now, social marketing, we've had influencer marketing. I feel like personal branding is the next subcategory that's going to kind of really pop off. Um, so back then, I thought personal branding was about positioning yourself as kind of very credible and authority driven which it is but that's only part of the story I thought it had to be very professional and formal with the kind of stuff you put out there and be very careful about what you did share but also what you didn't share mm -hmm. and as I progressed in my journey with it and written for probably around 50 different people now across kind of my freelancing agency and then previous work that I had 
I've realised actually your personal branding is so much more than just what you do as a living. It's about who you are as a person. Oh, and the difference, I think, for me was when initially when I first had clients, I was talking about their services and their business and their business model and giving tips. And, you know, for example, if there was a web developer that I was working with uh, as a client, I would give, you know, create content around five tips to optimise your website, or five ways to do this or this is a new update for this industry. And all that stuff's great, but that doesn't really tell somebody who you are as a person. It tells them who you are as a business. So for me, it was actually establishing that difference between a company brand and a personal brand and knowing kind of the subtleties of each one because the company brand falls through into the personal brand, but it's only one component of it. Yes. So what I've realized over time is that it's actually about pushing forward with personality and we all have original thoughts, all of us. So it doesn't matter where you are in your career and how experienced you are in your industry, you have an opinion on certain topics that you can speak about and speak with authority and credibility because that's your experience. And sharing that is a great way to build your personal brand. So I'd say that's kind of one of the main things that I've learned. Um, Another thing I think is to be just more relaxed about what I share. I used to be so disciplined with, when I, I shared content, mm-hmm. yeah, when I shared content, what I shared, well, I can't talk about this because this is going to reflect badly. And now I write content on my phone or as I'm walking to a shop and I click post and I don't schedule it. I don't think too much about it. I just, it is literally from my brain into my phone, gone, done. And I think that's a really nice place to be. When you get to that place, you stop second guessing yourself every time you create content. And it is just a reflection. I post what I would say to a friend or to a colleague or to a client. And if I write something and it's not something I would say in person, then actually what I've done is diluted that messaging to make it more appropriate for a LinkedIn audience. But, you know, that audience is drastically changing. So just be yourself. I love that. Joe has actually just popped in the chat that they treat LinkedIn just like the office. We share our personalities and non-business chat there. So why not LinkedIn? And um, no, I couldn't agree more. I um, I was very much the same at the start of my LinkedIn journey. I am through PLM. I have a three week webinar series called LinkedIn Level Up and we have a whole week on content. And um, everyone who joins, I actually pop screenshots of my first ever posts, (laughs) my LinkedIn posts on the slides. And um, everyone in the chat has the opportunity to roast me. Um, Mm -hmm. Slides are called like, what's wrong with this piece of content? Um, And it was very much what you described. You know, I was writing because I wanted people to have a certain perception of me. I was a grad, no, I wasn't a graduate at the time. I was a third year student. I was potentially looking for a job. Um, Considering like business-ifying PLM um, and I wasn't writing as as a me. I was writing as someone I thought I I had to be and someone I should show up as. Um, So I would totally agree. My perception of personal branding and my approach to it has kind of followed a similar journey to yours um I want to be my most true self when it comes to LinkedIn now um I actually had a call the other day and at the end of the call um the participant the person was like Sophie can I tell you something and I was like, my goodness what are they gonna say um and they very kindly shared that I was exactly how they thought I would be. And that is when I knew my LinkedIn personal brand and my content had ticked my boxes because that is exactly, as you said, marrying up your offline self to your online self. Um, I think that is the best space and the best place to be in, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I completely agree. And also I had a similar experience where I have recently taken on a new client um, and this client has been on LinkedIn for 11 years and not posted. Oh my goodness, wow. Um, and kind of approached me after they saw kind of what I was doing. And um, we wrote kind of a few posts last week. And the posts we wrote were very much driven like from the heart and just very honest and raw. And look, I've been on this platform for 11 years, but I haven't posted. I haven't had a lot of confidence. I've been building my business, but more importantly, raising my children. And I was like, this is such like an inspiring story of like growth and the journey. And we shared it last week and it went viral. And it was just such like a touching moment for my client to like see that after 11 years of not posting, 
realizing actually just me showing up as me is enough. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Um, Sarah has actually just popped in the chat as well. People do business with people, not companies. So just another reason emphasizing that point that you shared there even more um, to just be you. I've um, also got lots of flamingos in the chat for Roman and, and our favorite flamingo calls. So that's awesome. Um, sign of good personal brand, Roman. So you're killing it. Um, in a few steps, so I know that we've got a few people in the chat attending who I see on LinkedIn all the time, who I just think smash their personal brands. Roman, you being one of them. I know Jamie, I think Jamie's watching as well and his content too is amazing. Um, for anyone tuning in either live with us today or on the recording who is like, oh God, like Shuebi, smash your personal brand. I wish I could be like you one day. And I'm sure there are lots of people out there thinking it <laughs> because you're amazing. You don't want to do that. Um, you don't <laughs> um, anyone who wants to get started with their personal brand, specifically on LinkedIn, um, what do you think are the first steps um, that you should take when getting started with your personal brand? Do you need a strategy? Should you just dive in? Where should that starting point be? Um, can you kind of walk us through those thoughts? Okay, um, well, I have like a very simple framework that I do, which I've, I probably spoke about so much people are sick of hearing it but I'll quickly run through it because it is genuinely what I use with all my clients and it's worked it's the results show that so the, it's called like uh, mapping your brand it's a personal branding map and me and Ellie Middleton a shout out to Ellie um, we came up with it way back in October November time in a Starbucks um, somewhere in West Yorkshire and um, we've actually used it both of us ever since so mm -hmm. the M in map stands for mission so that's kind of your overall objective what are you trying to achieve mm -hmm. for some people that might be just to develop confidence for others it might be um winning clients attracting leads um generating publicity for a project or a campaign yeah. so identify exactly what you want to do for others it might be um exactly like you know finding a job for a student it might just be finding a job um, or building contacts, whatever, whatever it is you want to do, really kind of narrow that down to something specific. Because if you don't have that, then everything you do after it becomes a bit messy and it doesn't really come strategic and you're not building any, you know, you're not building in any particular direction. So once you've got your mission, then it's kind of how are you keeping things true to yourself? Because it's very, very easy, and we're seeing it now more than ever, to kind of submit to trends and copy paste templates on linkedin okay this is working so i'm going to take this change a few words and post it and fingers crossed it'll pop off that really pisses me off so <laughs> um, i'm very much against that so identify you know a, the a in map is authenticity how are you what are your values so what you want to be known for for me i want to be seen as kind of a credible honest transparent supportive person right and i think hopefully so some might disagree but like that's kind of me in real life as well Absolutely. So it's essentially just marrying those things together. And um, for others, they might want to build a brand because they're super sarcastic and witty, and that's what they want to showcase online as well. So it's about a kind of tone of voice. I think that's the important thing there. And then the P in map is pillars. So what are the four or five topics that you can speak confidently on and consistently and that you want to build community around? So for me, that would be personal branding. It would be diversity and inclusion. It would be employability. Yeah. those kinds of things in like leadership and bus business ownership th those themes mm -hmm. so I try to get great content around those themes that align with kind of my values yeah. and together they all help me do you know complete my mission which is to be kind of the leading person in personal branding which is a huge mission but we've got to be ambitious <laughs> so yeah. that is essentially the framework that I use with all my clients when we're on an onboarding call I you know and identify what is it that you want to do and you know sometimes when i ask them to tell me about their values and what, how, what who they are i realize by the end of the call i'm like no 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 that's not going to work because i've sat and called with you for two hours now and yeah. you're a really kind of witty funny mm -hmm. provocative person yeah. you told me you were really kind of a bit of an introvert and a bit shy and you know so it's actually about being really honest with yourself when when it comes to showing up online yeah, um so yeah that's the framework that i use um and then other tips that i would give people is to pivot as you go don't kind of get so stuck in your ways okay this is what i'm going to do i'm going to post 
10 times a week. I'm going to schedule on these days. I'm going to write content by this time because you never follow it. And usually if you're forcing yourself to create content, it's probably bad content. Uh, the best content that I've ever written for clients or for myself has been very reactive, raw kind of posting as I'm feeling something because you can be much more expressive in your tone and messaging and much more harder hitting. Yeah. So I'd say pivot as you go. You know, your, my map has, has completely changed since January. So I, I've changed as a person. So obviously my personal brand is going to change. My business has changed and developed, my network, my community. So you should always be going back and thinking, okay, this has changed. How does this affect how I show up online? Because you want to make sure that you're completely honest and cohesive with who you are and then how you show up as well. So I hope that answers the question. That's so <laughs> helpful. That's amazing. I love that framework as well. I'm a sucker. Is it an acronym? Is that what that's called? I think so. Yeah. Sucker for an, yeah. for an acronym. Yeah. Take me back to GCSE, English. <laughs> um, by the way, if you do have any questions, head to the bottom of your screen. If you're on a laptop, I'm not sure where it is. If you're on another device, um, click the Q&A box and pop your questions in. Um, they're awesome in the chat, but high likelihood they're going to get lost. So pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get to those shortly. There are some awesome questions I cannot wait to see you answer. Um, but I really love what you said there about kind of intuitive posting. Um, mm -hmm. It's something I've been reading about, actually. So it's quite funny that you say that. Um, I, for the past two years, have been growing, posting on PLM. Um, everything you see on PLM is actually just me. Um, which I got a comment the other day, and they're like, great job, team. I was like, oh, team, that's, that's me. Um, it's really funny. Um, so I have had like a really strict schedule when it comes to Instagram um, and LinkedIn for the business page, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Is that the right order? Every day of the week. Um, when it comes to my personal LinkedIn as well, I was very much okay Monday to Friday, very die hard every day, same time. Um, I saw a YouTube video by accident the other day, um, and they were talking about as a marketer, especially when you're building your personal brand, um, intuitive posting is just the absolute best way to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so by intuitive is exactly what you were talking about posting when you feel like posting when you when you have an idea um, I think setting a goal you know two times a week three times a week is nice because you have something to work towards um, but I was very much doing what you were describing okay it's Tuesday I have to post today what can I post about let's rack my brains and I'd end up writing something that really didn't feel like me because it was brushed I've done it because I told myself that I had to um and not because I had a thought that I thought could inspire someone or something that fit with my content pillars or who and what I wanted to be known for um I think it's really important because you, you don't just post on LinkedIn that's just a part of your busy day um I interviewed Isabel from Pearl Cosmetics last week and she said something that I've repeated about a hundred times in the past six days and she talked about how you should make social media work for you and not work for social media and which I think you outlined beautifully there and I love map mission authenticity pillars I think that's a really really great place for you guys watching to get started should you want to hopefully by the end of the session you will want to because I think personal branding can totally change your life so we've talked a little bit about content so far but I would love to dive in a little deeper on LinkedIn content um, for me when it comes to personal branding I think people smash it on Instagram I see amazing personal brands on TikTok but LinkedIn is just the ultimate pinnacle of, of personal branding for me. Um, I teach my clients, I teach my one-to-one -one students, I preach often about the importance of good content because for me, your personal brand, any brand, any marketing cannot take off if you don't have great content. Um, so from your experience, when it comes to LinkedIn, um, I mean, we see great content every day. We might see questionable content every day. Um, what do you think when it comes to personal branding on LinkedIn, a good post? What does a good post on LinkedIn look like? Mm -hmm. What does it include? Um, what are your thoughts? Okay, so first thing I would say is, and there's a great example of this. If you don't follow Amanda Baker on LinkedIn, I think you definitely should. Mm -hmm. um, she's kind of, for me, the blueprint of what a very real 
honest, raw personal brand looks like. She doesn't write content to fit a box or to fit a template or to go viral. She writes content as and when she feels that way. I should also mention as a bit of a caveat, I do work with her. So I'm not plugging myself genuinely. She is an incredible storyteller and that's her business. So she's got an advantage there. But I look at her content and I feel I can like there's almost like a bodily reaction to the way she writes. And I feel something. It's not just, okay, that's an opinion. Because how many times do you scroll down your newsfeed, read something and have no reaction whatsoever? Just like blank. Next thing, blank. And then you read something and it just hits you and it's so powerful. That's what you want to try and do with your brand. You want to create something that um, makes an impact. Um, okay, the name is Amanda Baker. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Amanda Baker. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send her an invoice for this plug later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so what I would say is you really want to be raw. So write exactly how you speak, first of all. Um, and if you're reading something back and you feel uncomfortable or awkward saying it out loud to a friend, a sibling, a colleague, then don't post it because it probably means you have filtered down to fit some box on LinkedIn. Now, when it comes to creating great content, and by great, you know, there's different ways to measure this. It could be high performing, high engaging content. It could be uh, content that really resonates with a niche audience on LinkedIn because it's not all about hitting the big numbers. Sometimes it's much better to create targeted content for a particular community to increase the conversion on that. So that might be like a DM, it might be uh, a business lead, it might be uh, starting a conversation or getting an invite to a podcast or whatever. Um, but generally, the framework that I use, um, and I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share it now. Um, a bit chaotic, but um, it's the framework that I use for all my clients, and it's like the secret formula that I've used um, since starting my personal branding journey in January. So I use a very different model to the agency that I used to work at, yeah. and the model that I use now and has generated probably around like 70 million views in the last six months is actually taking a universal theme that everybody can relate to so whether you're an intern at a company or a director or a business owner or any, anyone else in the massive category of people on LinkedIn take a universal theme that could be culture because everybody has had a touch point with company culture whether you know wherever you fit in it you've had the experience of bad culture good culture it could be leadership everyone's had a touch point with leadership and it, leadership doesn't just mean a CEO or a founder anyone can be a leader it's a mindset thing um so you know these kinds of things another thing failure mental health these kinds of topics that we all experience or we all have an experience with take one of those themes right and then inject a personal story or a personal experience into that theme so i might talk about failure on linkedin and give kind of a motivational message right it's not about how many times you fall it's about how many times you get back up right that kind of bullshit but as soon as i insert a personal story into it that grounds that piece of content immediately my piece of content is completely different to the thousands and thousands of other posts about failure on linkedin but still i'm maximizing the potential of that post to do kind of big numbers if that's what you're looking for if you want to drive engagement and build community i'm working with a kind of a theme that everyone can relate to but i'm making it personal to me and i'm sharing it in my tone of voice so that is the framework that I use for all my clients. You know, everyone has slightly different themes. For someone who works maybe in marketing, social media might be one of those kind of universal themes. Because even though if you, people might not work in social media, most people are on social media, right? So you do this great, Sophie. Like you talk a lot about trends and campaigns on social media, companies that are killing it, um, you know, like funny, relatable content, that kind of stuff. It does so well because... You're sharing, you're not just resharing content, you're adding your own unique insight to it. So you might describe, okay, why is this campaign so good? Or how has this company really nailed it? You're bringing your unique insight and tone of voice to that post. And that immediately differentiates you and positions you as a credible thought leader in your space. So that's what I kind of tend to do. Universal theme, inject some personality into it, inject your own kind of stories, experiences. And that for me is, is kind of the best way to create engaging content that performs well, but also drives conversation and debate. 
I love that so much. And I love how just there you touched on creating conversation as well. Mm -hmm. That is my aim on LinkedIn. Um, All I ever want to do is create content that creates conversation. Um, I think that is the most powerful thing. That's where I find the most leads as a freelancer, business owner. Um, I preach a lot about community and how conversation creates community. Um, The other thing I really loved that you said there was how like injecting personality is really, really key. And um, something I, so I host one-to-one coaching calls with people who who book in for them um and one thing we always talk through is our biggest linkedin struggles and um one of the most common answers to sharing a linkedin struggle is either imposter syndrome not feeling good enough you know there are millions of marketers out there why do i have something new to bring to the table um what I tell myself almost every day, which it's going to sound awful to begin with, but I promise it has a happy ending, um, is that there are millions of people out there who can do what I do. Um, There's probably a large portion of those millions who can do what I do much, much better. So again, awful start, but no one can do it like me. All of us, all almost 200 of you tuning in could create a post tomorrow about social media marketing, but what makes each one of those different is you. So I absolutely, I absolutely love that. I love how you emphasize the importance of that personality aspect. Um, it just goes back to what someone said in the chat earlier that people don't buy from businesses, they buy from people. Um, and that aspect of being on LinkedIn is one of my favorite things about spending time on that. So that's absolutely awesome. I think also just to add to that, it's a really good way to build trust. So, for example, with the clients that I work with, multiple of them, you know, might have a marketing agency or a, uh, a e-commerce agency, right? And again, there's so many business owners who, who do the same thing, right? But like you said, people buy from people. So don't just create content around what you do, create content around who you are, because that's the differentiator between you and everyone else who does the same thing. Mm-hmm. Totally. On the flip side of that, so we've talked about what good content looks like. Are there like two to three points or like key things that you see often that you would say are a bit of like a personal branding mistake or like non-recommendations, things that you potentially shouldn't include in your content, things to steer clear from? Um, What are the the non-things to do? Um, One thing not to do is to steal people's content and then not give any credit whatsoever that really annoys me um because that's nothing original and it really annoys me when the the person who stole it and reshared it gets much more engagement and benefits and monetizes from that um so if you are gonna be inspired by somebody and that's totally fine to do i'm inspired by people in my newsfeed all the time um but it's always about okay they might have focus on this topic and that's triggered a thought in your mind but I'm going to actually pivot that and talk about my experiences with it or take my unique angle to it or if I am you know reflecting on what they've said I will tag them and not just in the comments because that gets lost right you've got to put it in the post um, and give them the credit that that they deserve Um, and secondly what I would say is don't use don't succumb to using kind of copy paste templates and I said this earlier but I'm seeing a lot of my newsfeed look very similar mm-hmm. and the, the worry with that is you're actually creating content to fit an algorithm and you're not creating content to fit the reader. The, yeah. the a reader, you know, has particular emotions and feels a certain way and as soon as you start doing exactly what everyone else is doing, there's an element of neutrality there. Yeah. So you're going to lose that. And also, a lot of people who are doing this um, seem to love the idea of getting loads of likes and engagement and comments and it looks great on paper but you speak you they walk into a room Mm -hmm. and they have a bad reaction or negative reaction right so it's about it's not just about likes and engagement it's about your reputation and and as a credible person are you somebody who people want to do they trust you Mm -hmm. and if you're sharing clickbaity content to you know to a particular crowd then that's not going to work um that's something else i'd focus on and then thirdly, I would say um, people who post content and then leave it at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I see a post as a conversation starter. It's purely designed to trigger debate, provoke discussion, inspire conversation, 
or you know, it could be a DM, it could be a comment on the post, whatever. I think you should always see your post in that way. So always leave it open enough to for somebody to actually come in and, and respond. Like, you know, a post essentially is just giving permission for other people to enter your space and have a discussion. And that's the way that I like to see it. So don't just think, oh, I've posted this. It's going to do well in terms of numbers. I'm going to go now. I'm going to bounce. Mm -hmm. Actually, we should be engaging. And all those comments there are people who could actually become really loyal followers and people in your community. You could learn from them as much as they could learn from you. So don't just ignore them. Like, reply to those comments. Convert those comments into DMs. Jump on networking calls with people. I think, that, like, that's how sort of me and you met. Like, we engaged with each other's content. We jumped on the networking call and, here we are, and I think there's so much value that's just been lost because people are posting and then leaving it purely for a vanity reason to just build following and get engagement. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. I love that. I absolutely love that. And it's really funny you mentioned the kind of like replicated post there. I scheduled a post this morning for, it's probably up on my LinkedIn now for like 20 past 12, because um, I saw someone take one of my LinkedIn posts and essentially replicate it um, with no credit so I just popped on like three tips if you're inspired by someone else's content and um, one of the things that I always love like whenever I'm tagged in anything on LinkedIn it just makes my day to know that you as a creator have been thought of by another human being um, I think I said to you who was I talking to this morning someone on LinkedIn um, I was talking about how often we can forget that there's people the other side of like us posting which is crazy um one of my favorite things to be tagged in or to see is when someone writes a post and they're like thank you to Shweb for inspiring this post or I saw Sophie share a post about this so I wanted to share my thoughts and mm -hmm. keeping that conversation alive on your own profile and individual posts I think is wonderful um, but as you said there credit is, is key um knowing who you are and being that person on LinkedIn also key. Um, so I love what you said then. Some really actionable tips too, which these guys can take away um, and hopefully pop into their own LinkedIn posts sometime this week as well. Before we go to our Q&A and there are some awesome questions. Um, <laughs> Jill has just popped in the chat. Didn't you have a new employee last week? <laughs> Too. I'm not sure if any of you saw, I'm not sure if you saw Shu, but someone tagged PLM in a post, blast them, they said it was an accident, but I got a notification and it was like, I'm excited to announce I'm now an associate, pretty little marketer. And I DM'd them, but I couldn't because we weren't connected. So I left a comment and I was like, oh, like, sorry, I like, please remove this. This is a mistake. A lot more people saw it than I thought they would. Um, so it was a bit of an awkward moment. It was, I mean, I thought it was quite funny. Um, I did message the poor person. I'm so sorry that I didn't mean for that many people to see it. But um, in essence, be you on LinkedIn and don't pretend you work somewhere that you don't. Um, so it was an interesting one. But in essence, yeah, absolutely. I love those points. Amazing. Um, so in every session, I love wrapping up um, with this question. Um, before we head to our Q&A, there's some really cool cues in there. Um, so last question for me is what is one encouragement or piece of advice, either marketing or non-marketing, um, that you would like to share with your audience today? Oh, OK, good question. Um, I would say just start. Just start. Whatever it is you want to do, whether it's, you know, building a community on here, whether you have the idea to build that Instagram page or start on that TikTok platform or, you know, apply for that job that you don't think you're qualified for, just give it a go because the worst that can happen is you lose a couple of, you know, hours of your life and we have plenty of hours in life. People say life's too short. I, I We've got a long life. Like Life's fine. It's just make the, most, make the most of your time. Uh, use that time. If, if you're passionate about something, go for it. Um, because like, if, if, if I didn't go for it back in January, then I would be in a very, very, very different position, but also like headspace um, than I am now. And it's just purely through, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to take this risk. Obviously, measure that risk. Yeah. Um, but take, take the risk nonetheless. And, and if it doesn't work out, it don't work out. You just move on to the next thing. Awesome. I love that. I preach often on LinkedIn when I share my story with PLM about the importance of saying yes to yourself. Um, mm. I was diagnosed with anxiety when I was 14. So inherently, my first thought when it comes to doing something new is, 
oh my god this isn't gonna work it's terrifying I'm just not going to do it um in 2020 when the pandemic hit and life was crap um I essentially made a promise to myself to say yes to more things the things that scared me kind of like a yes man moment if you've seen that movie um and Mm. similar to you like totally changed my life if two and a bit years ago you told me that I'd be doing a webinar with someone I met on the internet in front of almost 200 people I probably would have pooed my pants but doing it now is an absolute result of everything you've said taking the risk giving it a go what's the worst that can happen if it's not life-threatening to you or anyone around you then Mm -hmm. I would probably get it done so awesome love that amazing uh, well, Shreve, thank you so much for everything you've taught us so far um there are some real nuggets of wisdom here i'm probably gonna have to rewatch this and, and start taking yeah. thoughts um because you've shared some really actionable insights which i know is always very appreciated um and with that it's time for our q a um so if you have popped a question in the chat, if you would be so kind as to leave it over to the Q&A box, um, that would be awesome. Um, they probably will get lost in the chat. That's why I ask. Um, so we've got around 20 questions. We'll try and get through as many as possible. Um, any we don't get through, I'll try and note down and, and we can kind of sort that another time. Um, so diving in, we've got a question from Jimmy who has said um i i'd love to hear your thoughts on this what do you feel are the benefits of a young professional starting a personal brand as you know i'm 18 and have been focused on building mine and the value i've seen has been ridiculous thanks and that's from jamie so what do you think are the benefits of a young professional building their personal brand Mm -hmm. good question um i could talk about this for days so i'm going to keep it very quick um one, it's going to help you find job opportunities and progress in your career very quickly um, compared to somebody who's not building their personal brand. But also from, for me, for example, I'm, it's helped me set up my business ultimately. 100% of my clients are through LinkedIn, inbound people who reach out to me. Um, a lot of them don't even know I have a business. They just reach out to me because they want to work with me. And that's insane Like to think about. There's so many agencies out there who don't have a personal brand and are trying to market in all these different ways, but they're not very successful. But like we've said before, people trust people. Um, but also beyond that, the personal brand is one thing that will never leave you. You could, you know, a pandemic could happen, you could lose your job, that nothing's guaranteed, but your personal brand is, because that's what people will remember about you. So even if after, you know, if, if I was, was to stop this agency that I was born, which is not happening, but if that was to happen, um, <laughs> I, I know my personal brand is still there and I can go into loads of other things because I've built loads of amazing connections and my network's grown. I've also met so many friends as well of, through personal branding. Um, I'm having a little kind of like get together in a couple of weeks um, and I was just like going through all the people that, that are on the list and most of them are like internet friends <laughs> and that was like amazing. Um, I've just met so many amazing people last last week we were at the social club event um shout out to anyone who was there um Sophie we missed you with COVID um but that was amazing you know I met so many so many like, ambitious young people and also it's inspiring I think once you build your personal brand and connect with other people it levels up your game and you want to be better and do better but you also want to encourage other people to win and it's such like a nice community to be a part of mm-hmm. so that's kind of some of the benefits of personal branding Others for like business owners, you know, winning clients, attracting leads, generating PR opportunities. I get asked to be on like four or five podcasts every week, which is mental because I'm like, what, what do I have to say? Like, that's so groundbreaking. But it's purely through your personal brand. If you put yourself out there, opportunities will come, come your way, guaranteed. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, um, my life changed. I talk about this all the time. Probably need to stop sometime soon. But my life changed when I started using LinkedIn not just in a business sense but I started using LinkedIn in my third year of university about six months before I finished last summer Um, and I had landed my first graduate job before I graduated Um, I've been fully booked as a freelancer for the past 12 plus 7 let's go 20 months Um, and like we share these achievements very humbly in order to emphasize the incredible impact that just sharing what you love and your thoughts and your expertise on a platform like LinkedIn 
really can do. Um, I know there are so many of you in the chat as well who I see use LinkedIn all the time and you've achieved so much through being on there, posting, being your best, most authentic, or sometimes your worst self because you're honest about the crap that goes on behind the scenes, which I love to see. Um, so some amazing points there and couldn't agree more. Um, our lovely Izzy Pryor, the one, the lady, the myth, the myth, the legend, um, has asked, um, what is the most interesting industry slash CEO that you've worked with? Ooh. Good one. That's a really good question. I can't say the most exciting because I'm under an NDA, which is probably gives you an indication of how mm -hmm. big they are. Um, one of the biggest creators on the planet, um, which is quite cool. Um, I, I think I quite enjoy, funnily enough, I quite enjoy working with a lot of the smaller startup founders. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it's very easy for um, an agency or somebody to take on like a huge, uh, like say a Dragon's Den star, someone who's very notorious on LinkedIn already, right? Because then, you know, it looks amazing when, when they already have huge following, but I find it so much more meaningful to work with somebody who's just starting their business mm -hmm. and not really used LinkedIn before, but we can build from ground up and they can see firsthand, like, wow, all these amazing opportunities that have come from it. And then watching them grow and their business take off at the same time as mine. I yeah. find that so inspiring because we're helping each other out as well. I'm learning from them. They're learning from me. Um, and so, so, yeah. I personally come from like a marketing and media background. Before I did personal branding, I did social marketing. Um, so I love working with those clients because obviously it, I, it just like comes to me quite naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but then also I work with a few kind of um, people who manage some amazing creators. And I think LinkedIn's becoming a platform for creators as we move forward. Yeah. So um, yeah, just working with really cool, exciting people. I love working with people in different industries. Yes. I don't want to like pigeonhole myself into one because I also get to work with 25 completely different diverse founders, different ages, different backgrounds, different life experiences. And I think, like, when else can you say you have access to all these people on WhatsApp whenever you want to learn from and just absorb knowledge? So um, amazing. Oh, I love that. I very much would agree. I um, I work in a different space. So I work as a social media manager. Um, I've been very lucky to work with some of the UK's biggest brands in the past year and a half so far. Um, but my favourite clients are always like the baby startups, the new mm -hmm. founders. Um, I just think being with them at this kind of tiny stage of their business and seeing that passion um, and watching how they navigate the really challenging times is, is really inspiring. Um, I've worked in teams who have ran some of the world's most successful marketing campaigns and they do it in a blink of an eye because it's a breeze and they have the millions of, of pounds in their budget but there's everything about working with the people who are grinding at the start which is so inspiring and yeah access to 25 of those people they say that your net worth no your net work is your net worth so come back in five years it's gonna be very high net worth and i'm very excited about that for you <laughs> amazing um oh a really awesome question from charlotte um charlotte has asked any tips on writing in a way that opens conversation mm -hmm. okay so i think firstly a good hook is super important and you know you want firstly the first step is to get people to read more on LinkedIn um, because if the hook doesn't entice that interest or it's not curiosity inducing then they're not going to kind of it's nothing's going to progress so a good hook that I in my opinion is personal you mm -hmm. use the word you're talking first person use the word I because immediately you're situating yourself into that topic um, into that discussion um, I tend to not like using kind of your stereotypical call to actions that sometimes feel a bit forced or a bit salesy um, so I always like to add some kind of points of humor into a post for example if I'm writing a post about uh, meeting a client I might also mention some really funny random totally irrelevant facts in there because I know that's going to be a great conversation starter for people to to engage with because there's something kind of funny or it, it can be quite Kind of smart with it as well like when you're writing content you might you know sell a product a little bit um but then you might want to throw in a total curveball and just leave it at that 
Um, and suddenly you've got loads of like people telling jokes and debate in the comments. Also images, an image can be a great conversation starter. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, don't be afraid of sharing images. I, I've had like multiple posts in the last three, four months that have done really, really well. And about 90% of the comments have been about something in the picture. Mm -hmm. A couple of times, I'm not going to lie, I added it strategically. Uh, so I've actually got one of them. I've, actually, I've got one of them here. It's my little mix <laughs> color. The thing. <laughs> my, my friend bought me. Um, I was like, I don't even know why he bought me. I just was with him one day. He just like chucked this up. I was like, here you go. It's a, it's a housewarming gift. And now I feel like a lot of people message me and the first thing they talk about is the little mix color. Okay. So it works, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I love that. I am. Um, I act, I love what you said about the hook of your post. And I actually write the first line of my LinkedIn content last. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I in my one to one course, I often describe the first line of my LinkedIn content, like so my book title. Um, if you write that first and you try and fit the rest into it, it's going to be pretty hard book to write but mm -hmm. if you start with what you want to say what you're passionate about what the learnings are what the story is and then try and sum that up in a sentence it's a bit juicy makes you want to click um that is the easiest way i have found to write a good hook um mm -hmm. if that first line for me isn't interesting i probably won't click and i will just scroll past because my feed gets so busy with so many amazing people um mm -hmm. so i love what you kind of pointed out there about just to add to that, like, I think a lot of people get carried away with this idea that you've got to kind of build that interest and, and you know, and, and take people down a post to get to the bottom of it. I'm the opposite. I'm like, put the good stuff straight to the top. Yeah. People mm -hmm. engage immediately. I think Jamie, a comment flew up, and Jamie said, don't leave the, you know, the value right at, top, right at the end of the post. Make sure it's kind of there straight away. And if there's anything you're writing just to get people to read a full chunk of text a lot of that stuff is probably a lot of fluff and waffle get rid of it and just keep in the kind of hard-hitting impactful value-based stuff mm -hmm. absolutely that's something I really struggle with I I'm very introverted but when I meet new people I'm a bit of like a puppy I love talking to mm -hmm. people I love learning about them and when it comes to writing I want to put all of that into my content so something I often do is I write it on just on the notes app on my phone I'll read it back and anything that doesn't need to be in there, it's just gone. I don't care if I like it, if I think it's funny, if I think maybe it, I don't know, whatever it might do, if it's not adding to my main point. Yeah. Just I um, don't know who it is I follow on LinkedIn, but they're a really awesome copywriter and they mm -hmm. often talk about the value of saying more in less. So wherever you condense it, wherever you can condense it, condense it, um, attention spans are going down and down by the second. So the importance of that, as you've highlighted, is absolutely key. Also, just a quick note to add to that. Um, I use um, just a web page called Hemingway Editor. Um, I'd recommend everyone use that. It's, it's a bit like Grammarly in a sense, but instead of checking for spelling and grammar, it checks for readability. So it highlights words that do sentences that are too complex or too long or too waffly. Um, and it gives you a readability score. So the lower your score, the easier it is for people to read. And I think that's really important just to help identify, okay, all this bit is um, too much waffle here. So it's called Hemingway Editor. Awesome. Um, someone just asked that. Um, but yeah, I, I write my post actually in there because it immediately, as soon as you start writing and it turns like yellow and then red, you're like, oh, oh, this is oh, too complicated. <laughs> you, know, you see, you've got to like go back and, and, and uh, simplify. I think clarity of, and precision of messaging is so important. Totally. Amazing. Oh, I love that. I will definitely be adding that to the highlights, uh, to the bookmarks on my, on my Google Chrome. And it's free. Someone said it's free. Amazing. That's what we like. Um, <laughs> awesome. That is all the questions we have time for. Um, to any that we've missed, I'm very sorry. I'm sure we will find a way to get an answer to you. Um, Shui, before we wrap up and I tell everyone about tomorrow's webinar and, and blab mm -hmm. on, um, if anyone wants to connect with you, keep up with the amazing business you're building, kind of learn from you in other spaces, where can they find you and what are your handles? Um, so typically I'm on LinkedIn is the place for me to be. Um, so just Shweb Ahmed on LinkedIn. 
in a couple of weeks, um, I'm launching a whole company brand, social channels, websites, video links, everything. But I'll be announcing all that through my personal LinkedIn. So follow me on there. If you have any questions like that were asked in this chat that haven't been answered, feel free to just ping it across to me directly on LinkedIn and I can voice note you an answer. Amazing. You are the best and as soon as I had the idea for the series and someone commented I did like a LinkedIn post I said who do you want to see what do you want to know someone said um personal branding and you were the first person that sprung to mind so mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for your time today and the wisdom that you've shared with us um your authenticity the way that you map <laughs> on LinkedIn mm -hmm. um is absolutely awesome and someone that we can all learn so much from um anyone who wants to attend the last PLM summer school it's tomorrow I can't believe how quickly it's gone but tomorrow at 12 p.m UK time we're going to be interviewing Lisa Eaton from Fabric Academy and we're going to be talking about everything literally everything you need to know to build a banging marketing strategy so if strategy is something that scares you that you struggle with that you think has too many big words and doesn't make any sense um lisa has 20 years of experience building strategy so i'm going to be learning a lot if you attend i'm sure you will too if you can't attend obviously there'll be a recording anyway um but Shui, thank you so, so much again for your time today. You've been an absolute joy. Um, everyone who's joined, thank you so much for spending your lunch time with us. Um, the recording will, of course, be up later too. Um, if you want to tune in tomorrow, prettytomarketer.com. And until then, I'll see you all soon. Stay safe, drink lots of water, stay aside, don't burn in the sun. Um, and Shui, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.